Hi, uh, so this is going to be a hand video. Um, I received a question from a guitarist and the guitarist asks, I have focal dystonia on my right hand. So I guess it is his plucking hand. Uh, my middle finger used to curl in towards my palm all the time when I play, I guess like this, but I think I managed to train to the point that it doesn't curl in all the time anymore, though I still have tremendous urge to curl my middle finger. Lately, I noticed that my index finger points out and it bothers me very much. I try to relax the index finger, but it just can't relax. Do you have any suggestion as to how I could train the index finger? Okay, so I have not met this guitarist in real life, um, or nor I've seen a video of, him, video of him playing, so I don't know any more details. Um, but I just can assume that his main symptom, symptom is his middle finger curling and his index finger pointing straight outwards like this. Like this. Um, this is a rather typical dynamic of a dystonic hand with one finger curling in and the adjacent finger pointing out. In this specific case, um, the middle finger curls in inwards and in index finger points out. But in fact, the index finger is trying to work on your behalf by trying to pull the whole hand upwards to counterbalance the excessive, uh, excessive force of the uh, middle finger curling inwards, right? Um, so I'd say since the index finger is trying to work on your behalf by trying to keep the whole hand from collapsing completely inwards, um, just trying to relax the index finger might not work, but perhaps you could lead your index finger to use that same force of intention of counterbalancing into a healthier direction. So we're going to be talking about that. Um, in other words, instead of locking all the joints, as you can see in this pointed out index finger, as in, you know, this joint locked, this joint locked, this joint locked, and, you know, perhaps the rest of your um, body kind of stiff. Uh, we want to unlock the joints and train your index finger to raise upwards in a more natural uh, manner that would engage your whole hand, yeah, like your whole hand in a way that makes more sense to your hand so it eventually balances out the muscle usage and the movement. So see the spell of focal dystonia is the blockage of movement which results um, to under usage of certain muscles, which then discourages the movement even more, which then weakens the underused muscles even more. And then again, you have a vicious cycle of creating even weaker hand with tremendous tension. Um, so we want to start disrupting this cycle by simply reminding certain parts of your hands and your body to move. Just simply move. Um, initially, perhaps in an exaggerated manner, but you want to start moving. So to start, so here we are. Nothing is more powerful than reviewing the natural structure of your body. So let's start off by looking at your hand. So my hand is on a flat surface and notice that my wrist right here and all five fingertips are on the surface. My third joint here or my MP joint right here is the summit, the highest point um, of my hand. Now, um, I understand that I'm taking a rather pianistic approach here, but I figured the um, optimal functioning state of the hand is more or less the same regardless of, you know, different instruments that we play. Uh, so I would recommend uh, this exercise to anybody. And simply learning how the hand is structured is the first building block to learning techniques. So I actually uh, would sit down and go over with any beginner piano students that might I might encounter um, with the same approach. So I have a natural position of my hand here. My hand is naturally round. I'm not forcing it to be round. This is just my natural uh, curve of my hand. And so depending on the structure of your hand and the size of your hand, this could look a little bit different, but uh, see how my joints here are the highest point and you know, it just kind of, um, all the joints are naturally uh, making my hand look round. So as I raise um, my index finger from this position, you can see that I'm using my whole hand to raise my index finger. Um, yeah, you want to be pivoting from your MP joint. Okay, 
Now you could probably see how my bone, you know, and muscle is moving right around here. Uh, what we want our hands to recall is the sensation of using the whole hand to move the index finger. Now, uh, now we have a balanced uh, movement of the index finger here, right? So now going back to the wrist, you don't want your wrist to be elevated like this, you know, um, like this, because then you'll be breaking the connection between your hand and your forearm. Um, when you have a broken connection between your hand and your forearm, you have a broken connection between your hand and the rest of your body. So it might feel as though your hand could be um, relaxed when you raise your wrist um, and let your hand somewhat hang from your wrist like this. Uh, we see this among uh, pianists as well. But this not only um, is actually putting strain on your whole arm, and your shoulder especially, but you're disassociating your hand from your whole body. So it's really hard to tell what is happening um, here on your fingertips when you have a broken wrist. Uh, I call this the broken wrist syndrome. So another important factor is that the broken wrist syndrome, about the broken wrist syndrome, is that you don't experience the full mobility of your finger and the full usage of your hand as you did with the natural position see um, if you could see that you know, I don't really get the full mobility of my index finger as opposed to if you know I would have in a more natural setting um, so you know which could lead to imbalance in overall muscle usage it's important that you review the movement from a natural state like this even when it feels like your sensation is a little bit off um, now remember always to take the natural or the optimal position instead of opting out for the unnatural position that might feel like it poses less dystonic sensation. Um, and I think you know what I mean. So always take the natural position that might feel a little bit awkward over the unnatural position that has less dystonic sensation. So it's really hard to tell if you're doing it correctly when you're um, doing this alone. Um, but you can, for example, check in with very, very uh, simple clues such as what we talked about uh, today. The wrist intact with the surface and all five fingertips on the surface and your third joint, um, your MP joint being the highest point and, you know, your movement pivoting from, you know, this joint um, upwards. Um, and then another point uh, that might, I wa might want to address is your fingers. You know, you want to maintain this natural curve, not, you know, pointed out in any way. Um, in that way, uh, I think you'll be using, you know, your hand muscle to, right here, to um, lift up your fingers. And of course, you could exaggerate it. Um, if this is difficult to do with your middle finger, you could certainly raise the uh, rest of your, um, your pinky lead the lift for your middle finger. Um, same with your ring finger and your pinky, okay? Um, so, of course, uh, this is just one small piece of the puzzle, but it does start changing the dynamic, dynamic a little bit. If you could review uh, how it is like to use your whole hand, right? And when you have the urge to um, point your index finger out like this, um, you could turn that force. You could try to experiment on, you know, um, lifting it up instead and see if, you know, uh, it changes the dynamic a little bit. Um, yeah. So a short video, um, just a small piece, but something to get you uh, started. Thank you.